Welcome to our, my presentation. So I'm quite excited. So I bought these two guys to watch me very carefully. So please leave your phones. Uh, so to, to <laughs> today, today I'm going to talk about innovations for better experiences. That was the, the topic. But I added something because it was fixed three months ago, but I added purpose. So today I'm going to show you a lot of stuff about experience and also purpose. But I want to start and I want to go way back at the beginning of my career. 20 years ago, I was working for L'Oreal, uh, you know, the big giant, for a brand named La Roche-Posay. And uh, we, we, we were a brand actually selling sunscreens, but it was more than a product, actually. What we were doing, we are doing uh, diagnostics, skin diagnostics everywhere. Maybe some of them know it. Uh, and uh, we are trying to catch early phase of skin cancer, if there is, on the street. And also, at that time in my product management, I, I added something to this experience, this UV card. Actually, what was happening? People don't believe that actually this sunscreen is working. So in order to understand, uh, we brought this UV card. It has a UV strip, and, and we were putting this cream on it, and one part we have the cream, the other part we don't, and we're exposed to UV light, like with the ones you have in exchange bureaus. And they were seeing clearly that this thin and transparent cream was actually saving their lives. So this is a very, very small innovation, uh, but it gives you an innovation experience and the purpose in the same time. So I'm going to show you what we do. Um, in, uh, in my company. So I started my company 10 years ago, and we, we first focused on experiential marketing, and, um, and of course, digital signage in it, but also we became an open innovation company. We help companies to innovate uh, what they have in their in mind. Sometimes it's a white goods company, sometimes it's an FMCG company. So let me show you our first phase, the experiential marketing projects, to give you an idea. mappings, water curtain projections for big brands like Unilever. Interactive video mapping, this was awarded best mobile marketing in Mobile World Congress. games at that time in several countries. Augmented reality. Then we targeted the point of sale, which is 365 days, an event area actually for us, for shopper experience. So we started with games and then permanent displays. Electronics also. This was a project for Domino's Pizza in Turkey. So actually, as you see, there is an experience that makes the customer engagement, it makes it more memorable. 
all the thing. But there is also a purpose behind, OK, sometimes it's just fun, uh, but sometimes it's art. For, uh, for instance, this is a project we did in 2009 in Turkey with, uh, with municipalities. It was an advertising screen. Now we see a lot of them nowadays. Um, they're showing posters. But we didn't want to do that. Uh, we put it in the most crowded area in Istanbul than other districts as well to give, uh, at the time I had hair, by the way, you see, uh, uh, to, to give information about the art and everything. So it was, and then we have seen that all the event menus starting to find us and see that because at that time there was only Nokia and no touch phones. This was before iPhone and we had to tell people touch the screen and it was kind of weird. Uh, then we took this experience uh, and we created something on the point of sale, um, which is the most permanent point of sale material is cooler. So in 2014, we did the first interactive cooler with Pepsi, which was packed of futures, camera, person camera detection, transparent LCD, but with our patented technology to turn it to normal and transparent uh, according to the video and the usage. You see now it's not transparent, now it's transparent. So we, we did, we put uh, we put 3D images of the product, they can check and uh, actually they can see the campaigns. You can take pictures, you can post them to Facebook, and you can play games. The reason why we took this project actually from Pepsi, because they've seen that transparent LCD has some problems, because they are transparent. So you see the products inside, and when you, put, when you don't put anything, when the, uh, the, the cooler is empty, it works perfectly. But when you put the black products there, you don't see anything. So we come up with this innovation to them, and we put it in the, on the field. Then we thought, OK, we did this for Cooler, which is a permanent, uh, permanent uh, merchandising material. But we see, we've seen that there is a problem there, for, um, especially for the stands, for the displays. Normally, for fast-moving consumer companies, they prefer temporary displays, like, ca like uh, cardboard and plastic, which creates a lot of waste. And usually they are not even there. The sales guy is putting there, taking some pictures. Usually they put five of them, taking the pictures, or take them back, and they send to the marketing as if they put it there. Or they put it, and in two days, the shop removes it. So we come up with a permanent solution, which was actually more cost effective when you look at it in two years' time. And we packed it with different technologies, like face tracking and um, and many more, so uh, you can see. So face tracking is actually tracking the face and changing the content according to age and gender. So we catch the right person. Then we have interactivity. Uh, people are here is making a quiz and they find the most relevant product to them. Then they get, they give their uh, data to us, which is connected to Adobe CRM platform in at Unilever. And they get a coupon, but in the coupon, we put a cookie insertion. So we, we can do a Google retargeting, obviously, obviously with the acceptance of the user. And we have also shelf scale. This is also in our new innovation. So we can track if the product is taken, which product is taken, and we can actually configure every shelf separately for all the products. And for the first time, yes, there are companies who are doing face tracking, there are companies who are doing shelf tracking, but for the first time we track the real buyer's age and gender. So we combine them both. But the problem of solving the per temporary uh, displays wasn't enough. So we started, when you go deep into, uh, into sustainability, into that purpose, uh, you go, you see many, many things. I mean, uh, you start switching videos, and then you come up with actually the biggest problem in sustainability is actually the packages. So most, like 50% of the plastic used are single use. 
So we started thinking about, with our customer Unilever, what we can do about it. So, uh, I mean, we are speaking about huge amounts. Eight million tons of plastic are thrown to the oceans. So for this, we came up with another solution, and we developed in our R&D department a fluid vending machine actually can distribute shampoo and detergent. Uh, and uh, we, we want to change the, the user experience on the shop, not buying a plastic package, but going there with their own package. They bring it, they put it, they put it in, uh, on our vending, they choose how much they want to buy, and, uh, and then they get it. But the advantage is not just there. So we have a complete CRM, and okay, also we can do uh, personal promotions and everything, really, really targeting. So we said, okay, this is a good start, but where are the most plastic are used? And we checked, actually, when we checked the statistics, plastic bottles are the biggest trash that are thrown to the, to the oceans. We all know that, that, and we are very aware this, year, especially this year. So we we start thinking about a new project, and uh, I present you our new project, which is actually a advertising-funded city fountain. So we, we presented to this to Istanbul, uh, Istanbul municipality, and uh, we, we will uh, very soon start our pilots. So the idea is giving, creating bottle-free areas. So what's, what's the problem with uh, plastic bottles? Actually, you can... You can drink bottle, but when you when you are at home normally, but when you are going outside, the only way to drink bottle is bottled. Uh, and the solution is actually bringing your own bottle. So we came up with this solution to actually a flexible bottle that was existed in the market, but now we are working also to make it plant-based plastic. So we bring the, the innovation here, and also in the innovation on the on the digital signage unit the first digital signage unit with the water dispenser. So we combined them both of it. So we did before in electricity and internet to a digital signage, now we just plug the water in it with the, um, with the air, uh, water purifi purification. But it's not just that, because we st when we do that, we start in the advertising side, we start targeting people. People will get their own bottle and they have to carry it in order to be in the system. So they have to show the QR code to get the wat their water, uh, uh, water consumption. And, um, and actually, we start tracking them because they have to sign in the system, etc. So, uh, and you know that on the shelf, we do face tracking, age tracking, gender tracking. So now, also we, in one side, we put the purpose behind that giving free water also using reusable bottle and create bottle-free areas. But in the meantime, we, we take some major steps on digital out of firm, on pay-per-view basis, paper and paper uh, engagement or uh, paper acquisition basis of uh, usage. So we try to innovate both the digital out of firm media and the way people look. Now we are also speaking with big Big companies like Vodafone, Racket Bank, is there, they are also having a lot of interest on purpose. So those companies, they need agencies like us to make this purpose happen, not just leave it in birds. So that's where we want to stay. And it's actually what we see, it has been a lot of changes in advertising, but at the end, at the end Nobody is really caring about seeing a video poster. So no, nobody is remembering. So you need to ha create an experience with the brand to, to share something and to, to turn your messages into an experience. But it, we see that it's not even enough. You have to have a good reason why behind. So people have to believe in your purpose. Or by buying your product or by engaging with your advertising, they, they have to feel that they are serving to their, that person's purpose as well. So I just want to show you a small video about what do teens think about advertising, and you will get a few... I uh, think overall, 
advertising gets a bit of a bad rap in our community. Ideas, it straddles between like business and creativity and there's always kind of a fine line you have to find. Growing up watching TV, I found them incredibly boring. Our attention spans are getting shorter and shorter <laughs> by the day. After five seconds, you can tell what kind of ad you're watching. There's so much opportunity for advertising to grow as an art form. Advertising can be really creative and really fun and innovative. If we work towards making advertising more beautiful and making advertising more interesting and more socially conscious, we work socially towards conscious. making a viewing experience, a media going experience. But I know a lot of companies aren't doing that. I think that brands who want to develop an audience with Gen Z should just remain authentic. When there's a campaign that is trying way too hard to appeal to a younger audience, we can tell right away and we can sort of tell who's making it and like what perspective they're coming from and often we won't fall for it and be like, I'm interested in this and often just ignore it or just skip it. Making sure that it's authentic and we can relate. Um, those two things together I think can really capture a Gen Z a participant, a, a teenager. The thing that brands really need to do is create content that's valuable and that we want to watch. Advertising should not be the place to misinform your users. It's still misinformation, even if you're making it look better than it actually is. I'll be perfectly honest, if I wasn't in advertising and if I wasn't interested in it, I would keep skipping videos. I usually don't skip the ad when there's a good song in it and I want to figure out what it is or if it looks really pretty. I usually am attracted to um, a diverse cast. I think that could be something that has to do with my generation because, you know, we care about that kind of stuff. We want inclusion. I like ads that tell stories. Ads that tell stories are usually how you'll get me. Like, oh, I feel, I feel that. Like, I'll get that. I think that what's happening with my generation right now around social justice is a really excellent opportunity for companies who want to reach out to my demographic and my age group. When they're not trying to sell you something necessarily and more present themselves in a way where um, we're making art and we're making films and we're making um, stuff for the greater good. If it's done in a way that feels genuine, it good. could be something really powerful. And it's not just about attaching a big name to it anymore. It's about connecting with the audience. So the last word that I can say, so we try to see behind the advertising and we, we, we try to help companies uh, to actually express why they are doing it. And we try to show the companies there are different ways of making advertising and we can actually, they, they can spend their money for better purposes and uh, for better causes. Thank you very much.